So Jane and I are here from the University of Manchester this afternoon to talk to you about the project that we've been involved with for a year and a half, eight, two months or so now. Um, and I'm going to start by giving you the context for the work that the project is addressing and then Jen will talk about the project itself and what we've been doing with teachers at Manchester and beyond and then I'll come back and sort of expand it out to some continuation work that's taking place. So I found this, we, we had to provide this 140 character um, tweet for our talks and I found this one, we've, we've become aware of the void as we fill in. It seems to me that as we start to identify where there's a space or a gap, we start to understand all of the issues around in that, and that's what I want to cover in the talk today. So, okay, so in terms of the context of the problem, it's been well known in the social sciences for quite a number of years, and most of you in this room will know about this, but um, social science undergraduate degrees have increasingly become less numerate. So at a time when the world is expanding with big data and uh, analysis of data and data analytics, social science graduates are actually graduating without the necessary skills to go into the workplace and undertake some of the work that they could be doing. And what's tending to happen is the economists are taking up those jobs because they've got the quantitative skills. In 2012, the British Academy published this some statement um, called Society Counts, which really sort of talks about the problem, the problems faced. Um, and as a result of that, a lot of attention has now been given to quantitative social science teaching. So that's the context in which we're covering this work. In 2012, 20 projects were funded by uh, the British Academy and the ESRC, the Economic and Social Research Council, to actually address this issue in terms of undergraduate teaching. So investment had been put into the postgraduate sector previously. Um, so postgraduates were dealing with quantitative data and quantitative analysis, but not at the undergraduate level. So what this funding did was to invest into 20 projects, and Manchester got two of them, and that's what we took about today, to help upskill students in quantitative techniques and methods using quantitative data. And the project that we got has been wrapped up into this term ESTED, so Enriching Social Science Teaching with Empirical Data, and it has two key strands. So one is about curriculum development, it's about being innovative with regards to developing the curriculum to address this gap in student skills, and the other one is about sharing best practice, and that's not just about sharing resources, it's about helping um, teachers, academics, who would like to be uh, able to teach quantitative data, helping them to do that, to actually support the teaching of these skills as well. Okay, and then just two uh, screenshots of posters that we've given at various presentations to talk about those two elements of the projects. And I'm going to pass over to Jen now, because she's going to say a little bit more about what she's been involved with with, with regards to the teaching projects. I should have said as well that they're specifically at Manchester in politics and sociology. So these are two areas that traditionally don't produce numerate graduates from their degree courses. Okay, Jen, over to you. Um, so this project has been designed around the idea that one way to improve quantitative skills is to just embed more quantitative data and methods into the undergraduate curriculum as it stands. So this gives students the opportunity to encounter the data um, and become familiar with it while they're already engaged in the topics that interest them. So this is sort of different to the traditional methods courses where they're taught statistics but without any kind of context in the subject. So we've been working with lecturers um, to change aspects of their courses that already exist and include more data. Um, and the stage that we're currently at is working out what we can do with um, our resources. So we're in the process of, um, we've got a, a website that's been developed, it's currently in WordPress and we're trying to make our resources available. And uh, we're moving towards a permanent institutional website in the summer and looking to put our resources into Durham. And we're looking at what, what from our project that we can share and be open and benefit for people. So we can make all of our resources available. Um, and these are being released with the Creative Commons license so they can be used and readapted. And we're also looking at writing briefing papers which cover aspects of um, teaching with positive 
data are in depth. So we've got one looking at how to support students to use quantity data in different aspects of their undergraduate curriculum. But the resources we've developed are very specific to courses. Um, so the idea is that students can learn to engage with quantitative data by finding it relevant to the course that they're being taught. So we work very specifically with lecturers to find um, data that was, that was relevant to highlight issues and theories that they were discussing. And this has been part of their, their value, but it might limit their sort of applicability in other contexts. But at the same time, in working with these, uh, in these partnerships, and there's 10 different partnerships overall, we think there's other lessons that we've learned that we can start to share. So one of which is just the sort of the teaching idea, so explaining the ways that we've been including data into courses. So one of the sort of really successful ways has been something called making students part of the data set. Uh, and it's a really sort of simple example where we get student responses to questions that are part of the national social surveys and looking at how students' responses compare to the national data. And it's a very simple exercise, but it provides a sort of platform to discuss a lot of um, theoretical and methodological issues. We've also done a lot of work looking at what data is available to social science lecturers that they can get easily and then use within their courses. Um, we've got examples of different types of partnerships and it's come very much through people who might not have a background in the quantity of data but through working with other people who do have that background have produced resources that really sort of link into um, social science subjects. And we've also got examples of sort of curriculum innovations for using data in classes provides a way to support active learning. So we've had students using data to evaluate um, a sort of theoretical debate within the class. We've had students going onto online tools and accessing social survey data themselves that they think is relevant to their uh, assessments. Um, and then we also want to sort of highlight the real value of these peer experiences. So making a platform for these lectures to sort of just tell other people how they did it and what they did. So the other aspect of what we're doing is trying to be organising workshops um, where people can come together and learn about the different things that we've done and discuss in the classrooms. Um, we're looking at making videos, so we've got a few already and there's more in development where people are talking about their own classrooms and how they included data. Again, we've got some more briefing papers to be developed and then we're looking into the idea of doing some webinars towards the autumn term. So the other aspect of ESTED is evaluation. So there's different steps of the evaluation process. So the sort of first plus is to do with the sort of baseline. So we're gathering information about students and lecturers and sort of experiences and attitudes towards quantitative data and methods. And this is to sort of just provide an idea of where we are in terms of how to include more quantitative data and methods into the curriculum. And then we're also evaluating the, med, the social science modules that we were working with. And this is being done through a survey of the students who've taken those courses and then also focus groups. And we're holding interviews with the module conveners covering aspects of what can help them to include more data and how this type of partnership working with and engaging with could be sustained. So we hope through the dissemination of the evaluation project, uh, through things like briefing papers and workshops, we can inform uh, the set projects and sort of wider initiatives. Uh, so, yeah. So Jen's just mentioned QSET and I said I'd talk about what's coming next. So I've talked about the project and um, ESTED was funded under a previous tranche of funding. And, oh gosh, um, 18 months ago, Nuffield, ESRC and HEFKE put out a call to the sector for um, national centres of expertise in teaching quantitative social sciences. And the University of Manchester was able to uh, bid and won one of those centres and it's one of 15 national centres around the country and as you can imagine what we're trying to do is um, develop the curriculum in the ways that Jen was describing
described based on what we've already learned from Aston, but also we want to work really closely with um, the students and give them opportunities beyond academia, so beyond the classroom, in terms of what they can do, and so that they can recognise the value of the skills for their future career. So we're working with a number of organisations, and the logos are on the right hand side, and of those 15 centres that are funded, we're the first one, I think, to have summer projects, internship placement opportunities for students to go out and work with some really credible organisations. So YouGov is the organisation that does lots of polling and is doing lots of work at the moment around um, UKIP voting and others. Um, and a whole heap of organisations want to work with our students and we'll send a student to them for six to eight weeks in the summer. The, the student will get paid through a bursary that's made available through QSTEP and is backed up by university funding as well. Um, and they're across sociology, politics, criminology and linguistics at the University of Manchester and they'll come back and share back with us what they've gained from their um, placement opportunity. Uh, and we hope eventually, well we, we've got intention eventually to develop these internationally as well because we've got links with the OECD and the World Bank and other big statistical organisations. So it's a fantastic opportunity really for our students to develop their skills. Right, I'm just going to run through this in terms of our thoughts about where this is going. So openness is absolutely embedded in everything we do. We want to share all our resources and best practice. But we think that OER, whilst a starting point, in and of itself is not enough. We think that sharing good practice is really important. So the workshops and all the videos and all the other activity, the briefing papers are going to be increasingly important to get the message out about how we do this at Manchester and how we learn from others about how they're doing it as well. Being part of a community, whatever you want to call it, in this scale is great, but there's a lot of reinventing of wheels going on here. So those of us who are involved in the JISC Academy program know that it took you know, three to five years to get an acknowledgement, a recognition that sharing is good and it benefits the community. What we want to do is to be able to persuade um, the funders of this program that that's the case so that they don't have to go through that building themselves necessarily. So in order for policy and practice to align in QSTEP, I think there's a real need for an evidence base, and there's been a lot of talk about this at this conference, but I think as a community, we still need to provide a stronger case to funders to say why sharing of OER and practice is a good thing. Um, there is, as always, the issue of collaborate to compete. So a lot of criticism we get at events, we go and say, we want to share all this stuff. People say, why? We need to sort of ring fence it and keep it to the 15 centres that have got the funding. So there's still that whole cultural dimension that we've got to overcome. And, you know, was it ever thus? I think people are always going to have, have those concerns. Um, and one of the things that we're really proud about doing, and Jen's talked about this, is putting real data as centre stage because that is a skill set that students really are going to need, not just for the workplace, but if they go on and do future research. And I think we'll all agree that there's many benefits we have in sharing, but I think we need more stories and more numbers, so more narratives and more quantitative elements in order to be able to make the case. So that's where we are, we're about two thirds of the way through SDEC. We're not even a year through our QSTEP centre yet, so there's an awful lot of, um, well, there's an awful long way to go. But that's where we are currently. And there are our documents, and we're very happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Time for a quick question, I think. But, uh, there's kind of a challenge to the concept of an OER project there, kind of expanded definition of some that make making OERs. As someone who uses lots of resources that I get from all over the place, are you going to create your own all the time, or are you going to use other people's resources, or a mix, or whatever? And you know, is it going to be home brewed, or? Um, well, in the Esther project, we've been specifically looking at how to fill needs within courses. So, whenever possible, we try to use things that are available. Um, but the main and, and but the main thing has been actually producing specific exercises for use in sort of tutorials, um, and so those resources would be made available within QSTEP. Yeah. Um, 
Museum, but also the UK Data Service. So well, that's, what, that's why yeah. I asked the question. It's always struck me. There's some really good stuff yes. on, on their website and, and you know, learning to teach material, but people don't use it. Yeah. I just wonder if you're going to be addressing that. Can you persuade your colleagues to use that Absolutely, stuff? because we've got some real champions mm. in Manchester, like Mark Brown, as you mm. can imagine, and they're mm. already using the data in the service and using some of the resources that the service are creating then we're using those where they're fit for purpose. But I think it's more about having a dialogue, so not all of the data resources in the UK data service are actually fit for purpose. So what we're trying to do is help influence what the UK data service creates as well, so it's a two-way conversation. But we are, where possible, trying to reuse resources that already, already exist. Okay, thanks for yes. that. Better move on. Thank you. So